Welcome, Stephanie. 60 years. 60 years? Ouch. I was going to say that. How is that possible? <laughs> I don't know. It just flies <laughs> and flies, as you said. <laughs> but you've had a great time. I still and, am. And still are having this great time. Still am. We're in rehearsals for 84 Charing Cross Road that we're taking on a short tour before we hopefully come into the West End. And uh, every day is... Uh, Every day's wonderful. Absolutely. So, I mean, you're looking incredible. I mean, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about tips and how you keep it going and how you. Keep oh, I don't. I don't have any tips. It's DNA. Okay. <laughs> That's such a shame because I really I'm want sure your tips. Lots of Everybody love out there to share want your it tips. with you. Um, so tell us about the, the new production, 84 Charing Cross Road. 84 Charing Cross Road was a very successful book. Uh, in the United States in 1971, it was published here. And then James Roos Evans adapted the book and made it into a play. The play was successfully done in the West End. It was also successfully done in, in, on Broadway with Ellen Burstyn. And Mel Brooks bought it as a property for his wife, Anne Bancroft, to make into a movie. So it was made into a movie. This is all in the 70s. And uh, Anthony Hopkins was in it. Mm -hmm. And Judy Dench had a very tiny part. It's real. When you see the movie, you think, oh, my God, that's Judy Dench. <laughs> oh, this icon that yeah. she, she now is. And... So time has passed. We tried this play out in uh, Cambridge about a year and a half ago, and we found that we thought it, it didn't have quite as, as much of a universal appeal as we thought we might be able to get from it. So we, went, we all agreed that we would, we would try it again, and we're hoping that what we're coming up with, what Richard Beecham, my director, is coming up with, mm -hmm. is going to have a broad appeal to people who never even heard of the book. I'm sure it'll... So I'm it's sure not a prerequisite people. to know the book. Yeah. I'm sure they'll absolutely pick it up. Yeah. But we talk about Mel Brooks, Judy Gent, uh, Anthony Hopkins. The pedigree is there. But for you as an actor, it's all about the character and you play Helen. Tell us about the character that drew She's a real... To the, her. It's a true story. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it's an absolutely true story. And uh, it's, a, it's a correspondence that began in 1949 from a woman uh, who was a uh, um, kind of failed and yet attempting to succeed a script reader slash writer who's, who grew up in, with a father who was a frustrated actor. And so she was exposed to the theater. She was also, she found refuge in, a, in libraries reading English literature, which gave her this kind of fantasy life of hers. And... Uh, by the time she began the correspondence, she was, in 1949, if you were 33 years old and you had no major relationship in your life, you were considered an old maid. So probably she'd already accepted that. She wasn't the most attractive person in the world. And she'd felt a little bit insecure about herself physically. But intellectually, she was... Crackerjack, you know. Mm. So when she found an ad in the uh, New York, the Saturday uh, Book Review, uh, Saturday Review of Literature, she um, for a, a bookseller in London uh, at 84 Charing Cross Road, she wrote to them. And she began a correspondence which lasted for 20 years, during which time, uh, because after the war Britain was still under um, rations, she wound up sending food, parcels of, uh, of uh, canned meats and things that nobody could get that, mm -hmm. uh, from Denmark, an organization that an English organization in New York that shipped food from Denmark to people in England. Sounds phenomenal. It sounds so, she, so she, we, they developed this extraordinary relationship that never culminated in a meeting because she probably was frustrated about not wanting to disappoint people and come over and, and meet all these people. And unfortunately, he died before they could meet. When do you start, Stephanie? When does it? When can we? See when can it? we see it? Uh, well, we're we're starting in Darlington, uh, the twenty third of May, mm -hmm. and we go from Darlington to uh, Wolverhampton, I believe, month, or, Ma or Malvern. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. So which you're is here which. for the royal wedding, and you know Prince Charles. Mm -hmm. Will you be going to the uh, Well, no, I'll be doing eight shows a week. Oh, there's no so time for the wedding. Oh, Can't fit the wedding in. in if you could. <laughs> Can't fit the wedding in. Um, no. uh, Stephanie, are you, so you used to, because you used to play polo with Charles, with didn't Charles, you? With Charles. Well, you've got a wonderful photograph that oh, I never yes, saw that? before. I'd love to get a copy of that picture. Well, well that could yeah, be a right. That's the easiest thing that we can do for you, absolutely. Yes, well, yeah. he was a four and I was a one. So he was the, I was the forward and he was 
the the back man. So that in 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 the game of polo, because you have four players, he was the the man I had to stay on top of. So I was always <laughs> <laughs> next to him, saying, "Sir, excuse me, sir," <laughs> pushing him. Brilliant. <laughs> Or so you don't have any tips me. at all there, Stephanie. You play in polo, you do yeah. Pilates, you do plenty, and you look absolutely fabulous for yeah, it. And good uh, luck. And we are very thankful for you Thank to come you. in. West, your best of luck with the show. It's going to be fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank really you, Stephanie. It.